I think I'll probably stop a random person in the street and ask them, you know, what do you think about six hostages being murdered? They'll probably say that's terrible. And, you know, they're probably, but it doesn't, it's not occupying their mind, right? But for us, because we're Jewish and we're talking about our own brothers and sisters. So it's, it's family for us. It's personal. I mean, I never met them, obviously, but it's still, it's very, very personal. So it's almost like this feeling like we're just alone. Like it's, it's sort of a very isolating. Like it's one thing to be in pain. It's also another thing, like no one actually understands what you're going through. No, that's true, but I think we can turn that around. Meaning, I think you're right, right? So for anyone on the street, it's another country. For us, it's our brother and sister. Brothers and sisters. You are listening to The JP Show. Where we discuss the issues you care about from a Jewish perspective. I am Rabbi G. And I am Rabbi Levy. And we hope you enjoy this episode. So welcome to another JP Show. Good morning, Rabbi Levy. Good morning. Unfortunately, we're actually recording this on a day that is sad. Yeah. Not, uh, not good news coming out of Israel with the six hostages being killed and other people who fell in terrorist attacks and soldiers and so on. Definitely, definitely a hard day. Yeah, a hard day. I spoke to someone in Israel last night, actually, and just, uh, you know, normally they're pretty strong there, but she did describe a very gloomy day. In fact, even the weather apparently in Jerusalem was quite gloomy. Yeah. And um, she lives in the same area as where um, that hostage Hirsch, yeah. um, his parents live there, and they're very high profile, and everyone knows them. And So yeah, heavy, heavy and, and, and dark. But we've got to continue to be strong. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to maybe let, let's, let's talk through this a little bit. I think everyone's sort of going through this today. And, and I think part of the heartbreak today i mean it's heartbreaking just in its own right but it's like you go through we go through in october 7th we go through all the months afterwards and then like you think you know hopefully things will just get better and then sort of uh brighter but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be going that way it actually seems to be like this type of event sort of like seems to be seems to be pointing us in the in the opposite direction how do we how do we deal with that it's such an important question, and um, I mean, two things come to mind. So, first of all, we have to look at history. It's not the first time, unfortunately, this happened, where we had hope, and then things got worse, and then it got better. So we know that it will get better, but I think fundamentally, fundamentally, really the only way to be strong and to continue to be strong, because by the way, that's the only option we have anyway. I mean, we need to be strong as a, as a right, that's up. That's our biggest power and always has been. Um, but really the only way to do it is with uh, faith. And we're not, I think. Yeah. Um, and that means on a number of levels. I mean, it means also that really believing that Hashem is actually with us. He's running the world. We don't understand him. He's transcendent. But there's a plan. And to believe that it will be okay. It just, it will turn out. Um. I think that's, yeah, I mean, everything else comes from that. I think that's like a, a starting point. Right? Yeah, without that, there's just despair. It is despair because it looks incredibly bleak. And and I think what we've found in Jewish history is that, you know, faith is, is we, we call faith into, into, into we, we access the faith when it's really, really looks bad. That's when we really need faith. Mm. We can't even pretend that anything else is possible. We just need, we 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 need to be there. Now, and I think it takes some specific significance, the fact that we're now in the month of Elul. We just thought, oh, well, no, we're actually not in the month of Elul. We're starting tonight as we record this. Maybe when you listen to it, it'll be at the Elul already, but it's Monday, it's Monday morning. So Monday night begins the journey of the month of Elul, where we are taught that God is close to us. Close to us. He's with us. He wants us to speak to him. He wants us to talk to him. He wants us to return and connect to him. So it's a powerful month, and I think we need to Take note of that, um, and to really, and to really use it out to make this a little different. Not not weaker, but actually stronger. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I was I was walking this morning, as I do every morning. Uh, I walk my daughter to daycare, um, and Good I was father. thinking, Good sorry. Good father. 
yeah it's also healthy you know, it's a walk so it's good sure. um and i was just thinking like part of this whole experience is that like everyone else walking in the street at least you know i'm, I'm walking there heartbroken and, and and in pain and and you know and everyone else is just living their life and and, and they're not necessarily bad people i think if i would probably stop you know, I believe Australia, for the most part, is, is a good country. I think if I'll probably stop a random person in the street and ask them, you know, what do you think about six hostages being murdered? They'll probably say that's terrible. And, you know, they're probably... But it doesn't... It's not occupying their mind, right? But for us, because we're Jewish and we're talking about our own brothers and sisters. So it's it's family for us. It's personal. I mean, I never met them, obviously, but it's still, it's very, very personal. So it's almost like this feeling like we're just alone. Like, it's, it's sort of a... Very isolating. Like, it's one thing to be in pain. It's also... Another thing, like, no one actually understands what you're going through. No, that's true, but I think we can turn that around. Meaning, I think you're right, right? So for anyone on the street, it's another country. For us, it's our brother and sister. Brothers yeah. and sisters. Which also means we are alone, but we have each other. In other words, we are connected to a, a bigger whole. It's not just... It's not like, you know, I'm going through something in my own family and everyone else just doesn't know about it. But we, we have a big family, and it's, and it's a big collective family. And we do have each other. And at the end of the day, we strengthen each other, and we have that we have that mandate to strengthen each other um to pray for each other to strengthen each other to do good things for each other and so on and to go through this together we know that there's a i'm not sure where it comes from but there's a phrase that, that's always used it's called sarat rabim um how's it go khatsin khama something that the the uh, the pain the challenge or the the, the adversity of a of many is half the comfort. Mm. Um, that doesn't that doesn't make it easier. It's just that it, it, it's easier to go through it together, and we have to go through it together. We have to even more and more understand how we are all connected, and we all have intrinsic connection with each other. Yeah, and and another thing that went through my thoughts also. I mean, we have this concept that God actually feels our pain. Like we have this. There's, there's a verse that says, um, "Ima yanoichi or uh, sort of yeah. a What's the, I'm with him in his pain, or the Chol Tsarosam Loit Tsar, which means all of their pain is his pain. Like, that's an interesting concept. Like, well, maybe, maybe talk about that for a moment. Like, I mean, we believe that God runs the world and everything that happens is through him, right? So he can choose not to do this. Um, so, what does that mean? He's in pain. Like, he's in pain about what he himself did. Like, how, how, do, you, how, do, you, how do you sort of reconcile that? So, so yeah. So, I think it's, it's, it's a, first of all, a very comforting person, but yeah, comforting verse. But I think, I think the way it works, the only analogy I can always think of is this. Now, I just need to be very careful. I need to sort of disclaim here a little bit, right? <laughs> um, it's not for us to justify what God does. It's not for us to answer and explain what he does. Mm. Um, and our mandate, in fact, is to ask him to take it away. And our, our, our obligation is to pray that God should only be revealed good. But I want to just bring one point out from this analogy, not everything from this analogy, but one point. And that is that God has a plan and he does things that we don't understand. And ultimately, it's going to turn out good for us, we, we believe, right? And sometimes um, we do things with our own children that are painful. I don't know. We take we vaccinated, for example, right? So if you take your, <laughs> I mean, you've done that more recently than I have, right? So when you take your child to the office to be vaccinated, um, the child screams. He sees the doctor with his needle, right? Yeah. And when he screams, you feel pain. You don't want your child to be in pain. And yet you hug him at the same time. And that's some comfort for the child. He doesn't see you. Child doesn't understand. Doesn't understand you're hugging him, but you won't take him away from the doctor's office. Mm. But yet, at least he knows that you're right there with him. And I think that's an amazing thing, right? So again, obviously, you can explain why you take a child to vaccination, and we're not about to explain why God does things because that's not for us to explain or to understand. Yeah. But at the end of the day, what we do know from that from that analogy is that He's with us, and He feels our pain. He does. Whatever reason He puts us through it, but He does. He's hugging us at the same time. And again, getting back to the month of Elul, I think it's more emphasized during the month of Elul. He is close to us. Yeah. We have this analogy there's a, of the king there's being a, in the field. Sorry? We have this analogy of the king being in the field. The God is correct, in the correct, correct, correct. And there's a piece of the Talmud. The Talmud says that every night, there's a particular time in the night, the Talmud says, where God cries for the fact that he had to destroy the temple. Yeah. And he had to send Jews into exile and you know, exile comes with all the anti-Semitism and persecution and so on. And obviously, it's the same question. Obviously, the obvious question is, well, if you're crying, so then just end it. I mean, you're in charge. Yeah. 
And on one level, we do ask God that. We say, you're in charge, just post, you know, finish it up. For whatever reason, when he doesn't, he, he is waiting to do it for whatever reason, but at the same time, he's with us. And we really need to feel that. And it's hard to feel that. It's it harder and harder. And that's when we have to rise to the occasion. We have to remember we have it within us that strength to just never give up. We will not give up. And we just will keep believing. Yeah. So what do you think we need to do now? I think that's the second thing that that um, is really, really important, right? We are in the month, we're about to begin the month of Elul. And really needs, it's always an important month, but it needs to be more needs to be much more than before, like a special one, right? And here's the challenge. I think sometimes we think that there's something wrong with that question. What should we do now? Right? Sometimes we think, well, what's the difference? Like what I do now? <laughs> like so what? So uh, what am I going to do now? I'm going to come to an extra shear or something, or I'm going to say another chapter of Tehillim, or I'm going to take upon myself a new mitzvah. Right? Bottom line, I live here. I'm not in the army. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing much. I can send a few dollars, maybe. That's not going to make a difference, you know what I'm saying? So we kind of slip into, it's not going to make a difference anyway. And I think this is where we really have to remind ourselves how, how not true that is. And I want to come back to a Rambam. And the Rambam, my, my, my monody says the following. He says that a person should always look at the world. Right? It's not just hyperbole. In other words, Rambam is really saying this as a serious thing. That a person should always look at the world as if the world is in balance. Like a scale, right? And that one small thing, like a thought or or speech or action, could tip the scale, right? So I think we need to remember the power of one small thing that we do, and we have to. If it's if you see, we can't just feel. There's two ways that we feel upset, or we feel alone, or we feel depressed, or we feel scared, or whatever it is, right? Sometimes it's just an escape. Like, okay, I feel really uneasy. But I'm just going to go about my life in a regular way. And it can't be that. Being upset and being, being feeling really like it's a sad day means because we are family. We, we, we connected. And when it's your own family, you help in any way you could. Now, just like a regular thing, if, some, if your first cousin is going through a challenge in America, um, okay, so there's a medical team. I'm sure they're taking care of it. And not much you can do. But you can spiritually support a person, and sometimes that's very, very powerful. It is very powerful, always very powerful. And there's always stuff we can do. There's different things that need to be done. One of that is spiritual support and bringing goodness into the world and a spiritual and positive and powerful energy into the world. So that's through the things that we can do. We can pray. We can do another mitzvah. We can help. It's not time to to slip. It's not time to say, well, I'm tired. I'm tired of this already. Now's the time to say no. Mm. On the contrary. And you think you sell, yeah, okay, so I'll uh, I'll put on tefillin, or I'll go to shir, or I'll, I don't know, I'll light Shabbos candles, or I'll do one more mitzvah, keep Shabbos a little bit more, or whatever the case is, right? You think, I mean, that's just me, I'm part of who knows how many people. Um, what's that going to help? And the answer is no, you could be tipping the scales. It could be your little mitzvah that does it. That's how your perspective has to be. And the same thing goes with the idea of the power of being connected and unity. Yes, people squabble, and unfortunately now in Israel there's a little bit, let's be blunt, it's a bit of a division again, which is very sad and very very concerning, actually. So you can't fix it, you can talk about it, you can complain about it, you can say, oh, so really is that, this one's right, that one's right, no one's right, everyone's right. That's not the point. Point is, we know the power, power of peace, the power of unity, so increase it in your own life. Um, connect to someone you haven't connected to. Uh, Resolve a, a, a conflict you have with someone. Talk to someone you don't talk to so much. All that kind of stuff. Forgive. Let let go. Don't be jealous. All that kind of stuff is so important, so powerful. Even if it's done by one person, you never know what that can do. Hmm. Yeah, that's powerful. Do you have any other any any other thoughts coming from these uh, dark days? You know, I think it's something you often said, I think we've said this before about the Zohar. The Zohar says that we have a capacity to do two things at once. Yeah. So I think we can we can be in pain, and we should be, and we can um, be upset what's going on and why it's taking so long. We can also be confident, positive, happy even. 
But you know, simchas is also important. Happiness is important. Joy is important. Joy, as we know from the Arabis, that joy breaks boundaries. And joy brings strength. And pride, Jewish pride brings strength. And, and Jewish identity brings strength. So now's the time to dig deep. Yeah. Dig deep into the reservoirs of our real Jewish strength and, and say, no, I'm going to hold my head high. There's no end, right? There's no, there's no point which we won't be able to dig deeper because it's because it's infinite. God is yeah, infinite. Saw, we don't test it anymore. But like, there's never a point where we're going to say this is just too much. We can't do this anymore. No, I mean we hope we hope it's going to be very. We're not going to have to do that. But but yes, right. yeah. that's correct because we have an neshama and the neshama is infinite because it's an infusion of God. It's a godly spark. And evil, as strong as it is, is, is finite. It's not. It's not more powerful. Evil is darkness. Darkness doesn't really have existence. It's just the absence of light. It's not, you know, yeah. and it's and it's not godly. Yeah. So we need to we need to dig deep. This is this is the time of year. If it's ever a good time to do it. Yeah. For Rosh Hashanah to find discover that soul, discover the the spark within us. Yeah. And I think we have to lift each other up. We yeah. Have to each other. For sure. Okay. Stay hopeful, everyone. Have, have faith. Better news and good news. Very Amen. Soon. God. Amen. Have a good day, everyone.